everybody, today I wanted to talk to you about why I've decided not to use print on demand for my next project. I announced last week that I've got a new book coming out which is called Milk and Cookies. I say coming out in a few months, but I announced that it's, <laughs> it's in the works. Uh, if you want to find out more, I'll link that video below and in the description. But during that video I said I'm, I'm not using print on demand for this project, I'm going to be getting it bulk printed, which I'm super excited about and I will be sharing everything I learned about that and all the ins and outs as I have done with everything else on my publishing journey. Um, but I, I wanted to sit down and talk to you about why I've made that decision. So my previous two books, I've got them here, Milk and Lily the Limpet, are both published using print-on-demand services. So this is actually the KDP version, I can tell because the back's slightly different, uh, this is the KDP version of Milk but I also print it with Ingram Spark and Lily the Limpet is only with Ingram Spark. So I thought I would start off with explaining why I decided to use print-on-demand and the positives of it and then go through why I've decided not to go that route anymore. I'm absolutely not saying that it's not a route you should take, I'm really happy with my experience, I'm just explaining why I'm changing that um, to give you food for thought if you were considering these decisions. So, when I brought my first book out, I up until about three months before this came out, I was still working as a teacher, I was balancing kind of getting this book ready with working. I'd not long had a baby, she was, was she one? Maybe she was one, but anyway, that's not long. <laughs> um, so yeah, I had a lot on my plate and so part of the decision making was to keep it relatively simple. I am not saying print on demand is simple, but there's a lot of resources out there. Um, I think it's, I do think it's simpler in, in some ways just because it's easier to find the information, it's a more commonplace way of doing things. So yeah, um, that was part of it, but actually the absolute biggest reason for why I went print on demand is lack of space, quite simply. If, so a box of these books when I receive them, when I order author copies, a box of books probably holds about 30, I guess, about 30 copies of, of milk. And so I have two boxes of this book, maybe one and a half, something like that, which I've got stashed in a cupboard in my house. Uh, we've got an old airing cupboard that doesn't have a cylinder in anymore, <laughs> so we can just keep things in there. So yeah, literally just two boxes stacked up with a load of these and some of these because these don't take up so much space. I don't have anywhere else to put books. Um, and I think, when I've talked to other people who choose to use um, bulk printing, they have somewhere to put the books or they pay for warehousing. I live in the UK and I do think that, that that's part of why print on demand is, I don't know, is it more commonplace here? It feels like it is, but it might just be the people I talk to. I don't know, that might be nonsense. However, my point is this, in the UK, Generally our houses are reasonably small, our, the rooms in our houses aren't very big, I'm, I'm basing this on comparing it to America, um, and in we, we generally don't have garages, it's not normal to have a garage in the UK, obviously some people do, I don't, um, so you know, I my house is like an adequate size, but there's nowhere where I can put loads of books, if I ordered 250 of these, 500 of these, a thousand of these, I, I mean, I just like, where would they go? It literally came down to, I would have nowhere to put these books and I didn't want to be that person with boxes and boxes of books that, you know, <laughs> don't get sold or whatever, you know. Um, so yeah, literally, books of this size, where, where would I put them? So that was the main reason why I chose to go print on demand. The other really big reason is that they handle all the distribution. I was new to this, I didn't understand loads of things, I wouldn't have even known where to start really, and as I say I was balancing lots of other things, I just couldn't have handled distribution as well. So with print on demand you set up the files, they send the metadata to all the people that they distribute to, Amazon is sorted for you, anybody else it's all sorted for you depending on how how you set it up and who you use and all that but 
and I don't have to get involved in sending these books. If somebody orders them, unless they order it from my website, I'm not involved. <laughs> I just kind of look at my sales and that's it. Um, I just order a few books. As I say, I've got a couple of boxes here for events and for my website. And that's it. So those were the decisions for why I decided to publish that one using print on demand. And because it was a system I knew and it worked and I was happy with it, I did the same thing for Lily the Limpet. And as I say, this one is just through Ingram Spark, which at the time was because they were the only ones who did the spine, um, the finishing that I wanted. So that's why this one isn't on both KDP and Ingram Spark, where this one is. Um, so that's where we were up to. Now, all that said, the downside of print on demand, and I was aware of these when I made the decision, it's always a case of weighing it up for what works for you, what your setup is, what your, you know, everything. So for me, um, the downsides are that the, the books with print on demand are considerably more expensive than when you get them bulk printed. But then the other side of that, of course, I'm sorry, I don't know if you heard my dog sighing. Since she's got old, she's nine, she has started to take liberties. She was never allowed on the furniture and she, everybody suddenly feels sorry for her because everyone's been spending far too much time with her because of lockdown. So she's lying in front of me on the bed, which would never have been allowed pre-lockdown. I'm also hiding up here because the kids are downstairs working. Um, so what was I saying? Yeah, so they are far more expensive. But on the other hand, there's no wastage. It's not like trying to estimate how many I'd sell when I have no idea what my sales will be like. And I order 500 and they might be cheaper per unit, but I only sell 10 of them. Let's hope that I don't only sell 10. Um, but you know what I mean. So for me, it was like, well, okay, they are more expensive per unit, but that's okay. Um, Again, that's just a decision you have to make, how many you think that you will sell and all the other factors as well. But that definitely is a point. You also have limited options. Uh, it may fit in with the options that you want and it might not fit in with the options that you want. So um, in terms of the binding, um, the choices in terms of the cover, you really only have the choice between matte or gloss. Um, you can't do anything fancy. There aren't options for things like board books, some trim sizes aren't possible. Um, you have very limited options in terms of the paper. So this is cream, but you can have white and that's basically it. And you have very limited choices in terms of the paper weight. So yeah, again, it depends what you want, what your project is and what your um, how your business runs and what you want from it as to whether that works for you. So that was, you know, how I felt. Then. New Year's Eve. <laughs> New Year's Eve came and what happened was I'd got an email from Ingram Spark to say that they no longer did um, this finishing. So this is, what's the word? Saddle stitched. So it's where it basically has a staple through the middle of the book. And they said, we're not supporting that anymore. So your book has to be perfect bound. I'd got the email maybe around Christmas, but I hadn't made a decision about it. And on New Year's Eve, um, my husband was working and I don't know what the kids were doing, why does it matter? And I came up and said, have you got five minutes just to talk through this with me and what you think? And so I was talking about the fact that I was going to have to change the binding of this to perfect bound, which is where you have a spine instead of having the staples. Now, the reason why I had chosen to have this book uh, saddle bound <laughs> is because you, there is a page limit, a number of page limit for you to be able to have a spine and it's 48 pages. Now 48 pages is quite long for a children's book. Most children's books are 36 pages, that's standard uh, and I mean picture books here. Lily the Limpet is actually 28 pages and I sat and thought well could I do a new edition and could I put more material in there and make it up to 48 pages and no matter how I looked at it I just I couldn't I couldn't put another 20 pages worth of content in here to make it so I could print on the spine and I don't prefer <laughs> for um for a spine to be blank and I have 
indie books that have got blank spines for that reason. I also have traditional books that have blank spines, I assume, for that reason. And I just don't like it. I think it doesn't look as nice. And I know that lots of indie authors do things like have a nice, maybe the colours of the book wrap around or you can see part of the image going around, which you kind of can with this one, but only a little bit. Um, and, it, and it works. And again, it's fine if it works for you. But as I say, my preference is I didn't want to have the flat spine and then there's no text on there. And so I was talking to my husband for ages and what about this and what about that? Now, the other thing is that print on demand is set up for longer books, for chapter books. And so that's why the paperweights that they offer are what they are. They're so, you know, if you put the paperweights that are used in children's books into a book like this, it would be enormous. But you don't have the kind of choices that a, a children's book publisher would, would use. And for that reason, those of us who do print print on demand books using uh, print on demand children's books, um, they have thinner pages than they would if they were bulk printed. And um, <laughs> Dolly, lay down, lay down, darling, lay down. Come on, lay down, lay down. Otherwise, you're going to have to go. Come on, down, down. Come on, lay down. Lie down. Lie down, Dolly. I didn't say stand up. Settle down. So you don't have the same thickness of pages that you would in a book that has been bulk printed. Um, and you also don't have the same paper finishes. Often in children's books, they have a silk or a gloss finish to the interior pages, not just on the cover. So um, I was discussing with my husband that although in Lily the Limpet, it's not too much of an an issue in some books because the paper is thin enough that you can see the colours through it but because I have double page illustrations that's not such an issue but still the paper is thin it's much thinner than a children's book would a traditionally published children's book would be if I don't know how well you can tell I brought in the Gruffalo just for for comparison I don't even know if you can tell how kind of floppy that is compared to that just to give you a sense of the, the paperweight anyway so we were having a discussion about kind of my feelings about about that um and having to change the cover which coincidentally i have i've changed it to um, a perfect bound book and going forward with my next book that if i can't have the saddle binding which my feeling on that is that means it takes away that issue of not having the spine because it's a different binding and it's the same binding that Harry McClary has and it's the same binding that, um, I'm trying to think of another one, The Hungry Caterpillar has. Um, you know, that, that to me makes it look better than a blank spine and that not being an option bothered me. Um, and so it was kind of an opportunity to readdress how I do things. So I was then talking to my husband about my next project and that I want this, as I always do, I want it to be as good as it possibly can be. And also I'm launching this using a Kickstarter and I want when people get their Kickstarter rewards to just be absolutely thrilled at the book that they get. And the oh, I obviously always want that for my customers. I hope that <laughs> I hope that comes across, but that as I'm kind of learning more and that thinking ahead to the next thing and thinking, how can I improve it? that I want people, if they've invested in this project, to receive the product and think, I love this, this is brilliant. Um, and so my husband and I sat and looked at various books. Now to give you an example, this one, again, I don't know how well I can tell you. This is an indie book. I interviewed the author of this. I don't believe this book is available at the moment. But Elliot's Adventure in Canterbury was bulk printed and the quality of the pages in this is lovely. They're really robust. And I was showing my husband this as a comparison. I said, have a look at this. And I've got some others. Um, you know, maybe I should be looking at producing something like this. But I'm concerned about the storage. However, with a children's book, the storage is less of an issue. I can probably order, I mean, well over 50, maybe almost 100 of these. I'm trying to think even, because they obviously don't fill them because of weight, but I can fit a lot of these books in a box. And so a few hundred of these, yes, I'm gonna have to find space, but it is less 
of an issue than finding the space for hundreds of bees. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we had a long discussion about it. And I have been thinking about different options because I like to look at what all the different publishing options are anyway. And I said to my husband, do you know what, if, if I can store these, and we talked about various options for how we can store them, maybe this is the way to go. And it certainly is something that I want to try. And so, um, you know, we agreed that it was doable um, and that with me looking at the Kickstarter, it meant I could get the investment for paying for printing the books up front rather than print on demand where it's done as you go. Um, so all in all, basically, I decided that in terms of the quality um, and also the price per book, because as I've done some research, it's about a third of the cost for my print on demand books. And so obviously then that makes the profit margin that much higher. And I was looking at, so for if I buy 50 books, that's very similar. The price that I'd pay for 50 books is very similar. It's not that far of what I'd pay for 200 book printed books. Um, and so you think, well, <laughs> it kind of weighs up. So what I've decided, my next project, I'm gonna keep doing this, uh, my next project, I am going to use bulk printing in order to get the higher quality. It does mean I am going to struggle a little bit more with the international market. That is another reason to use print on demand because I, I can distribute myself to Amazon. I can also distribute to other, other people, but how, you know, some, some bookshops, some various people won't necessarily take a book depending on the volume that you produce and all that. So uh, the availability might be limited even in this country, but in terms of getting it abroad, I mean, you'd have to ship a big stack of them and then have somebody distributing them abroad. So I, it is gonna have an impact on my international market. But that said, I don't sell very many books abroad. And obviously I want to sell them abroad. I want anybody who's interested in my books to be able to buy them. But you know what, other small publishers, and I don't just mean indies, I mean small traditional publishing houses, um, small independent publishing houses, they, they don't necessarily, you know, have their books listed abroad as standard, they can ship them abroad, but it's not, um, you can't go on, you know, the US or the Canadian or the Australian, Amazon or whatever um, shop and just buy uh, those books there there are ways and means of doing it but yeah it may limit my my options in this country and abroad so that will be something that will be interesting and worth worth you know learning about um, that said sometimes <laughs> dog keeps making noises sometimes when um, my book is listed um, it doesn't look very available. So for example, if you look on bookshop.org, which I love, I've got an affiliate page with them, I think they're amazing, I love the ethics of that company. But bookshop.org, if you look up my books, it says that they're backlist. Now what backlist means is that uh, gardeners who supply them don't have a box of books, they don't have a stock, they have to order it. So it's not unavailable, you can order it, but will somebody see that listing that says backlist and understand that, understand, yeah, I can order it, it just might take a little bit longer, or will they look at it and go, oh, that's unavailable, you know? So sometimes the places where my books are listed, people don't want to buy them anyway because they don't seem available, if that makes sense. Um, and my main marketplaces are in person, and amazon.co.uk. So if I can supply those two markets, which I can, then that's actually my main sales. Anyway, as I say, obviously I don't want to disappoint customers anywhere. So I will look at ways of getting it um, as many places as I can. But so that's the downside. Um, but as I say, for me, the quality, the, um, the unit price makes a big difference. For example, if I have, you know, if I if I want to go to a shop and say, hey, do you want to stock this book? And they say, oh, can you give us a copy? If the copy I'm giving them costs me a pound, 
that's very different to the copy I'm giving them cost me three pounds or however the price is, you know, two pounds versus six pounds or whatever. Um, my books don't cost six pounds. <laughs> um, but, but my point is that it means that I'm going to be more willing to give those books to um, shops, to give those books away in competitions and things like that because the unit price to me means that it's more affordable for me to do those things for promotion. Um, there's lots of little reasons, but the predominant reason is the quality. And going back to the spine thing, which I spent ages talking about and then didn't really explain, it will mean that I can put a spine on my books, which when I look at my children's bookcases, I did a bookcase tour if you want to look, um, <laughs> if I look on my children's bookcases, you can obviously see the spine of most of the books. Some of them are um, saddle bound like these, so you can't. Some of them... Um, uh, don't have writing on the spine but most of them do and I want somebody to be able to say the little kid goes oh I want to read milk and cookies tonight and the parent can go oh okay and look on the bookcase and they can see it you know so yeah have being able to have the things written on the spine to have the thicker paper and to have the finishes so for example if you look at the Gruffalo I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see the shine this is probably like a silk finish by the way, I used to work in the print industry, so um, it makes me a bit of a nerd. I'm like, ooh, I think they use this ink and this. Anyway, my book, in contrast, is matte, and that's the only option you have in print and demand. Um, so, yeah, I can get a nicer finish, thicker paper, I can get the spine, I can still fulfil most of my distribution, um, and I get the lower unit cost. So that's why I am weighing up in that way this time. Will I use print on demand in the future? Um, most likely. I have, I think if I'm producing a chapter book at present while, where I don't have the storage, I don't really have a choice. There is literally nowhere I can put boxes of this kind of a book. And I do have a chapter book coming up in the future and I, I will be using print on demand for that book. So it's not never, it's dependent on project and I'm not get maybe in the future I will move everything over to bulk printing I've thought about it um I definitely want to move Lily over and especially because there will be another one in this series at some point in the future and I would want them to be the same so if I'm using bulk printing for the second one then I will re-release this as a bulk printed book um I'm still very happy with my decision surrounding producing these the way that I did but I think you learn as you go through, I mean, any industry, I know more about how to handle distributing a book and a bit more about publishing and various things to do with books and publishing. That means that it doesn't feel so scary for me to go to a bulk printer and to choose the kind of paper that I want. And I have the, the communities to be able to ask you know, how do I do this, or what do you think about that, and um, so that really helps as well. All in all, as I say, that's why I've made that decision. Now, if you're making similar decisions, I would say, like I said, everybody is different. Don't take this as a, you should bulk print. Bulk print if you feel that is what's right, and research it, see if it will work for you. It, print on demand works fine. You know, for me, it means I, it, it's easy. I, as I say, I don't distribute them, um, and it's it works it's fine it's fine <laughs> and like there, there are advantages to it and that's why I chose it so if it feels like the right way for you then you go for it and if it doesn't or you're looking at investigating something different then have a look at it because it's certainly not impossible there are resources out there and I will be sharing everything that I learn anyway have a chat to me in the comments. I'd love to know what you think. How do you publish your books and why? Um, for me, it's all about trying to make my books as competitive with traditional publishing published books as I can because I see myself as a professional in this industry and so I intend for my books to be the same standard. So, um, and where I can't achieve that, which with children's books, as I say, is just more complex. If I can, which I couldn't when I first published this, but if I can, then I will use, um, I I'll try to do that. Um, I don't know whether I, yeah, I think I did say that obviously there's a, there's an implication in having to pay up front for all the copies instead of 
book by book. Anyway, I think I said that. So yeah, tell me in the comments, why have you chosen to publish your books the way that you do? Um, what are your experiences, pros and cons for you, all of that stuff, I would love to know. Um, please hit like, I will obviously be sharing all of this as I go. Um, so yeah, so make sure you subscribe for all of that. Um, and did I say at the beginning? I might have done. <laughs> it's home school, my brain is just gone. Um, if I didn't say, there's I've created a Facebook group for my upcoming book release and I will link that below if you would like to join that to find out all about that book as it comes out. So, good. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all for another video very soon.